and uh, good evening to the people joining from different parts of the world. We welcome you to Wire to Win webinar series. My name is Noor Basha, Senior Marketing Manager at WinWire Technologies, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. As you can see, all the logistic details are available on the screen and would like to highlight a couple of them. During the webinar, please feel free to post questions and we will try to answer as many as we can at the end of the session. Recording of this session will be shared to you in next 24 to 48 hours. In today's session, we will recap some of the learnings from Microsoft Ignite conference, which concluded a couple of weeks back, that is uh, between May 4th to 8th in Chicago. So let me take this opportunity to introduce you to my colleagues who, uh, who are the, uh, today's uh, session speaker, uh, Mr. Vineet Arora. He is the Chief Technology Officer at Winwire Technologies and he has over 20 years of experience in the IT industry. He is a Microsoft Azure cert Certified Architect and Microsoft Virtual Technical Specialist. Along with Vineet, I have Ravi Kanchan, who is a Senior Technical Architect and is a Microsoft uh, Virtual Technical Specialist. With that, I would like to turn it over to Vineet. Noor, thank you very much. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, good evening to everyone. We'll start the uh, slides. Uh, as uh, you heard from Noor, we also have Ravi Kanchan, who is uh, participating along with me. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join the session. Ravi, if we can bring up the slides. Uh, I'll start off the session and give you some background. Uh, we had our team, entire team, presenting and also uh, participating in the uh, Ignite conference. I'm not sure how many of you were actually there in person. Uh, if you were, you may have seen all the excitement. And if you were not, uh, I'm sure you'll get a good uh, you know, perspective on some of the key things that we uh, learned out there. So that's uh, who we are. And uh, let's just uh, start the slideshow, uh, Ravi. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, Ravi. Thank you. So one of one of the things that uh, we want to talk about is uh, you know just what we observed in the entire conference. Uh, one of the big things, and this is just a photograph that we took uh, in the keynote session. Uh, Satya Nadella, who is uh, the CEO of uh, Microsoft, and over the last one year, he has been at the helm of the things. And if you have been in the Microsoft ecosystem for a while, you would know that things have been very different uh, over the last year or so. Uh, Microsoft is literally transforming itself and transforming the rest of the IT industry and how Microsoft technologies are used how Microsoft technologies interact and integrate with uh, other, uh, you know, platforms and other technologies. So this is a very interesting, uh, you know, sort of screenshot and slide that uh, we took that Microsoft's transformation is uh, really evident in the kind of uh, technology changes that they're doing in their platform, but the kind of participants that they have in their own uh, ecosystem now. They are just not limiting everything to the Microsoft platform, but opening much wider. Now that's a topic for uh, uh, you know a separate discussion. Sometime we'll talk about how you know everything from Salesforce to Oracle to other some of the leading IT vendors are now more partners with Microsoft, and Microsoft is partners with them than ever in the past. Uh, what we would like to focus on in today's session is more to do with how Microsoft platform itself has been evolving and what are some of the key things that the Ignite conference uh, brought together. Uh, as some of you may already know, and if not, I uh, would certainly like to summarize that Microsoft used to have many different conferences where they used to provide updates on uh, different topics. There was a dedicated SharePoint conference, there was an exchange link conference, and then there were, of course, much more generic uh, sessions or conferences like TechEd, uh, PDC, and all. Uh, all of those were combined 
this year for the first time. And it, uh, if you were there again, you would know it was a very exciting, almost 25,000 people converged together uh, at uh, the Chicago's uh, con convention center to hear Microsoft talk about uh, various technologies. What we have done in this session is just picked out some of the key ones that we believe uh, are very interesting for uh, us to know how they are going to be shaping the kind of solutions that we are already implementing in your IT organizations or how business is going to be benefiting by leveraging these technologies. So I'm going to cover a few bit of uh, the key messages and then I will hand it over to Ravi to take over the details of some of the other topics that you see out here, and then I'll wrap it up with a specific focus on Azure. And as you can see, this was no longer just focused on SharePoint, but you know a wide variety of uh, platforms and technologies. Let's talk about the key message. The key message that we heard, and it was very, very uh, clear, is uh, after so many years of SharePoint still being a very, very key and important platform. It is still, you know, the center of the universe, but the key phrase that you see out there is that uh, while Office 365 is the, is one of the most used uh, SaaS platform out there for organizations, I, mean, I don't come across any organization that don't have some way or form, some aspect of Office 365, be it just being used for email, or just being used for uh, email and link, uh, which is now Skype for Business. Uh, but SharePoint still is a very critical part, and SharePoint on-prem becomes more and more critical because due to various reasons, there are hardly any organizations uh, which are purely on cloud. And hybrid is the word of the uh, year, word of the you know decade, if you can uh, talk about. The combination of SharePoint on-premises, which has been there across uh, thousands and thousands of organizations, plus the flexibility and the ease that it provides, uh, Microsoft provides with Office 365 platform, combining both of those together was one of the key messages that came in. And now these are platforms. These are not products anymore, as you already know, right? The idea is when we build and we design and we articulate solutions to our customers, and you should be, it's all about bringing the best of both the worlds together and making sure that you're just not migrating from one environment to another environment, which is mostly thought about as on-prem to on, on the cloud, but looking at a combination. And when we dive deeper into that, you will see that SharePoint on-premises, and we are not going to be sort of uh, talking about the various components of SharePoint, I'm sure many of you or all of you are already aware of what is SharePoint as a platform has evolved over the last you know, 10 to 15 years. The new services, that is where um, the whole Office 365 platform is growing. So you would have heard about OneDrive, that used to be SkyDrive, Yammer, that has been the enterprise social platform, and uh, you know, uh, maybe if some people were expecting that at some point in time Yammer will have an on-prem version, no, that is not going to be the case. I don't think, uh, in spite of some requests, Microsoft is ever looking at Yammer, the enterprise social platform, to become an on-premises solution. What is only getting added is more and more Office 365 platform solutions, but making sure that there is a seamless experience between what you may already have or what you may develop on your on-premises to work with these services that are there. Both of them have grown, both the platforms have grown, as you know, on their own parallel tracks. And now this is the year, this is the conference in which we saw a very strong uh, merging of features, functionalities, and you will hear a lot more when Ravi covers about the key features on how all of these combine. Uh, one of the key things that we'll touch upon that we saw uh, really growing as a feature and functionality in collaboration solutions is all around uh, Delve. You may have heard about this being called as a code name product from Microsoft last year called Oslo. Uh, its official name is Delve. 
And while you may have heard and seen about Dell, what we saw in the conference was pretty interesting on what is coming and how Dell is becoming uh, more of a new way to consume uh, and information and to find content uh, within your organization. And that, if, if, I, if I have to remember, that would be one of the top three things, uh, just the entire Dell experience. And we'll show you some of the um, examples of those, and we'll talk about how Dell is becoming a very, very important uh, UI and a platform for the content and the collaboration and the integration between various other technologies. You will also hear a little bit about next-gen portals, which is the maturity of the entire platform. Um, I was uh, you know, able to get into some of the sessions, and again, if you were at the conference, you would know it was really overcrowded. Uh, there was all running around of uh, participation into the sessions that was uh, happening, and you had to be really uh, much ahead of the time before the session starts to really be able to get into the sessions. So that just speaks to the popularity of some of the topics. And some of those are around the next-gen portals, which is all about having pre-packaged solutions that Microsoft is bringing for business scenarios that you see in the, in the companies uh, and making sure that you have your time to market is reduced to build those kinds of solutions. And then there are other IT-related aspects around compliance, around search service applications that we'll talk about. But the key phrase on this slide that you should walk away with is the seamless experience. And again, like with any technology and platforms uh, evolution, seamless experience is um, evolving. But this is the first time when we saw that from a content, from a feature functionality, and just from an experience overall experience for the end user, um, you know, Microsoft is not only trying, has made it possible to really have your on-prem and your on-cloud based uh, on solutions really integrate with each other. So I'll hand it over to Ravi to go into the specifics of some of those experiences. And the first one that you would like to talk about is the cloud accelerated experience, and then some of the other topics that we have talked about these are some of the uh, really interesting topics that we came across in the conference. I'm sure there are many more uh, that were covered, uh, and, but these are the ones that we believe would, would be interesting for you to know about, and we'd love to take questions around these or anything else, and love to be in touch with you to answer any other questions. Uh, Ravi, over to you, and I'll um, come back into the session once you're done with your part. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Vineet. Uh, hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Good evening, uh, depending on uh, which part of the globe you are uh, joining from. Uh, myself, Ravi Kanchan. I am senior architect with uh, Winwire Technologies. Uh, for over a decade now, I have been involved with uh, Microsoft Technologies, and uh, uh, primary focus is around SharePoint and, and Cloud. So moving ahead from where uh, Vineet has left, uh, so cloud accelerated experience, uh, as Vineet has emphasized, and Microsoft has uh, repeatedly, uh, and it has come out as a narrative from, uh, from the Ignite conference this year, uh, that hybrid deployments are, are going to be the future of, uh, future of IT industry. Uh, moving, moving, moving forward on that, uh, we, can, we, can, we can now say after, the, after this year's conference that uh, Microsoft Cloud, Microsoft's Cloud First uh, strategy is taking a concrete shape now. Uh, going forward, what we will, what I am going to walk you through is how Microsoft is envisioning to uh, achieve that uh, uh, that Cloud First, and keeping in mind that uh, your on-prem deployments are still the uh, the universe uh, universe of your uh, your your uh, your deployments. Uh, First in the line is uh, the key uh, is the next generation uh, hybrid search. So this is uh, this will be depending on uh, the new search service application, which is, I should say, uh, cloud search service application, which Microsoft is coming up uh, uh, towards the end of this year, uh, which will be hosted on cloud, and it will not only crawl uh, the the content on Office 365 but it will also crawl uh, 
the content on uh, on premises. So this is a deviation from uh, what we have the, the hybrid implementation, which we have at this point available, is where uh, the search is uh, ideally is they are two different uh, uh, indexes, one on on-prem and one on on uh, on on cloud. Uh, what this hybrid hybrid deployment does is it, it creates a search result based on on, on top of uh, these two indexes. But moving forward uh, uh, to uh, to continue with uh, the seamless experience which Microsoft is uh, is aspiring to to achieve between on-prem and, and and Office 365. Uh, going forward, we will just have single index. Uh, between on-prem and Office 365, uh, which will result in, uh, in in an interesting and it will simplify and it will provide seamless experience all across uh, across cloud and on-premises. So you can see in this screenshot over here uh, that uh, search result will be spanning across Office 365 and and will be getting search content from uh, multiple SharePoint versions. So you you will get uh, you will be able to search content from SharePoint 2000 version of your like 2013 and 2016 going forward as well, and also uh, also from the file share, uh, and 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 not not to say the least is uh, is uh, you will be also be able to search the content from uh, the Office 365 as well. So this is this is pretty interesting, and as I believe this is going to be the key pillar of one of the two pillars. Uh, of hybrid implementations, uh, what Microsoft is envisioning. Moving forward, uh, Dell, as as we need said, this is going to be one of the uh, one of the the key feature on on going forward uh, as far as my Microsoft strategy uh, based with respect to uh, content consumption is going to uh, about right. So this Dell, it was announced uh, last last year during a SharePoint conference 2014. Uh, since then, Microsoft has invested tremendously on on uh, on Dell to bring it uh, to integrate it with all the services across uh, on Office 365, whether it is Exchange, Yammer, uh, Link, etc. But now, what Microsoft is doing is it is extending that functionality of Dell to on-prem as well. So it doesn't mean that uh, you will have an on-prem version of uh, Dell available, sorry, on-prem version of Dell available for your SharePoint. This is not how Microsoft is envisioning. You will have an extension. So Dell on cloud will be an extension and will be available as a service to your on-prem SharePoint deployment. So moving, moving, uh, and going a bit, bit, uh, giving a very uh, brief introduction on 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 Dell is uh, Dell is based on a, a machine learning engine, which is called uh, Office Graph, uh, which is very tightly integrated with users uh, user profile, which kind of provides a personalized experience for the users, uh, the based on the content they are working on and and the team. The individuals and the colleagues they are working on, and what content their colleagues are, are interested in. So it kind of creates uh, uh, using this machine learning uh, machine learning engine. It kind of uh, creates a uh, uh, creates a board for you, which provides uh, uh, which predicts what are all content you will be interested in interested in. So it is going to, it, so so moving uh, moving away from so this experience is going to be uh, away from search, where you are going forward and, and searching the content. Instead, now this content will be pushed to you. Uh, all relevant content will be pushed to you uh, uh, based on your uh, usage ex usage uh, uh, or across across the system. So hence, so so there are two ways we can use uh, uh, Dell is one is uh, finding content based on people so you will the content will be pushed on to you based on the people you are working on working with and on the vice versa is it also provides uh, uh, your inter like it also provides you information on the people based on the content you are working on so 
So all the all the all the people associated with that content, uh, the the co-authors with the content, the co-authors with you, uh, the poor people who are uh, visiting or sharing your content, or those who are viewing your content, you will get introduced to those people as well. As I said. Uh, Dell is based on a uh, machine learning uh, engine um, uh, which is uh, which is in Azure. Uh, it is a very powerful tool uh, which which do uh, 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 analytics which 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 analyzes your usage pattern based on the people you are working with and the content you are interested in. It creates a kind of uh, it, it it is in a very interesting point where uh, Microsoft can. Uh, can can predict uh, and and kind of create an analytic analytic analytics on top of it, uh, which can provide you insight into how your team is uh, interacting or collaborating within within uh, within themselves and how you are man how you are uh, as a, as an individual you are spending your times and energies on. So uh, over here in in this screenshot which which we have we can see this. Uh, so you have uh, my work-life balance. So you have uh, you can and you can see it will give you uh, uh, an insight into the emails and and the communications you are having with the emails you are sending, uh, you, the 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 number of hours you are, the percentage of hours you are spending on your email, the the amount of time you are spending on on online meetings and and your gamma conversations, etc. One very interesting part of, of this analytics tool, uh, which is uh, part of the Delve, is uh, as I said, is team network activity. Uh, this graph this is a very simple graph which provides you information on how your teams are collaborating within themselves. Uh, you over here you can see it's like uh, it will it will give you an insight into uh, which team is is communicating which which team and which team should be communicating with the other team and they are not doing it and so that you can take action and and make 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 the overall uh, overall uh, uh, productivity or increase the productivity of your teams across so office graph will is also extensible uh, and it it will be available uh, it is have it has it is exposing apis using which you can uh, uh, you can write your custom applications uh, using uh, uh, like using uh, query APIs and content enrichment APIs. Uh, you can use so that you can have a similar experience on your custom applications, and you can also integrate your custom application with uh, using Delve, uh, using Delve and Office Graph. Uh, one more, uh, the next key uh, investment what Microsoft is making. And uh, it is already there, available on Office 365. But uh, Microsoft is uh, now making a big investment on uh, on 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 uh, on it is uh, Office Groups. Uh, the idea behind or the key concept behind groups are uh, so groups represents teams uh, within your organizations. Uh, it, it provides a flexibility. And, and a control to your team so that they can create their own, uh, and they can communicate, uh, they can communicate, uh, and collaborate uh, based on and using the tools available on Office 365 and your on-prem uh, deployments like Outlook. So users can a, a team can collaborate using uh, using Outlook, OneDrive, and they can also uh, and they can also use your uh, your on-prem applications uh, using this. So this is uh, so as I said, uh, Office 365 groups now are uh, are integrated with all the uh, all the uh, all the services are, are available on all the services available on Office 365. As you can see, as uh, this is a screenshot from Exchange, where a team can collaborate and exchange email uh, based on. Uh, uh, emails uh, based on uh, based on their closed group. Uh, users can search for their uh, their groups from within the Office 365 and and now the Outlook uh, uh, Office uh, Outlook 2016 as well. Uh, you can you can also have calendars uh, 
like specific to your groups. Uh, it is also integrated with, it is now it's going to be very closely integrated with uh, Skype for Business, uh, where you can, on a single click, you can invite users from your uh, group to for, for, uh, for a meeting, uh, for, a, for an audio or a video call, uh, depending on uh, the, your, depending on your requirements. And uh, it, 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 it saves or it, it creates a history or it creates a, it provides a context as well as it, it saves uh, the entire history for the specific group so that in future if you want to go back and, and refer to the meeting notes and, and all your meeting history, uh, you can definitely do that. Uh, it's also integrated with OneNote, so each group will, uh, you, can, you can associate, uh, you, you can have your yeah, OneNote uh, published for your group so that uh, your group, uh, individuals uh, from your groups can come and collaborate uh, uh, using, uh, using OneNote and they can save and they can, uh, they can also uh, save the whiteboards uh, on, on, on uh, OneNote. Uh, what is next is, um, uh, so now the next step for groups is going to be, what Microsoft is envisioning is they will be bringing uh, these groups to uh, on-prem implementation as well, for your on-prem on implementation, like your Outlook 2016 will have integration with, uh, with, uh, with groups on Exchange. Uh, you, these groups will also be available on your uh, SharePoint on-prem. And and uh, of uh, and uh, and Skype for business on prem. So there, like some of the other uh, the key investment what Microsoft is making on uh, on using groups is uh, Outlook 2016. Uh, they will be now. It will also be integrated with uh, Office Graph and Delf. So this is going to be interesting. Uh, Skype for Meet now. Uh, invite guest users. So you can also not only with you can collaborate not not only within your group, you can also collaborate uh, from outside uh, outside your group, whether it is within your organization or somebody outside your organization. Uh, uh, extensibility of third-party apps, so using uh, you, the, the APIs will be exposed using which you can uh, extend your uh, your custom applications to use these groups and, and the information uh, around, around that. Uh, from the administrative administration's uh, side, uh, we will have uh, it will have a, a list of uh, uh, features and uh, functionality available, uh, like uh, like e-discovery and, and legal hold and, and integration with uh, your on-prem Active Directory, etc. Will be available uh, going forward. So, uh, so this is uh, the unified compliance center. So this is going to be uh, hosted on client. So at this point, in the current uh, in the current uh, implementation hybrid implementation uh, scenarios, uh, the possibility of uh, compliance is is pretty limited. So that uh, at this point, you have a compliance uh, separate compliance center separate uh, for Office 365, and you have compliance center separate for your SharePoint on-prem implementation. Uh, going forward, so cloud-based unified uh, uh, compliance center will be will be spending will be providing you uh, and will be providing control to your record manage, uh, like content managers and your administrators uh, administration team uh, con control over uh, uh, all, all content on Office 365 and as well as on-prem content uh, it from a single location. So, uh, so what other thing what Microsoft is 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 investing on is uh, uh, SharePoint 2016 and Office 365 distributed site. So, uh, not only services. Now, what Microsoft is envisioning is uh, to extend the information architecture uh, across the across uh, on-prem and Office 365. So, you can have uh, users and users uh, can have. Uh, uh, seamless experience, and they will not. Uh, they will seamless experience between the content on uh, or, or their hosted site site hosted on on prem or or the site hosted on uh, on prem uh, on or hosted on Office 365. So so your your now your uh, information art architecture will be as expanded across 
on-prem and Office 365. Uh, the, the experience, uh, the way it is, it is going to bring uh, forward is uh, like uh, the the following. If you follow a site or a document, now uh, you will have uh, you will have a seamless integrated experience. If you follow a document or a site on on-prem or Office 365, so it will come. As uh, it will come uh, as it as a single location uh, when you go and look into the list of uh, documents or list of sites you are following, uh, you will have seamless experience. You will have uh, sites from on-prem as well as from Office 365 uh, available to you. Uh, moving forward, uh, as as we need said, uh, one of the key uh, focus what Microsoft is uh, is having is. Uh, Around next gen portals, uh, so in so Microsoft is in fact is making a huge investment on uh, on uh, these portals. So they are leveraging uh, the functionality and features available uh, and services available on Office 365 uh, to to create these uh, ready to go portals uh, like video portals. So which was uh, uh, which was released last year and and uh, Dell Dell. Again, if you if you closely look, is is a portal as a service which is uh, on, on on top of uh, Office 365. So new in 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 this uh, list of uh, uh, in this in the list of uh, next generation portal is going to be a knowledge management portal. Uh, so what Microsoft is uh, envisioning, uh, and even if uh, even if we look. Uh, Closely into any knowledge management uh, implementation, so it can be divided into two parts. One is a knowledge collection strategy, how you are collecting your information, uh, how you are collecting uh, the information uh, available on within your your systems, and how you are disseminating or how you are available making and making uh, uh, that content available for your. Uh, for end, your end user to consume and, and, and discover. So uh, what Microsoft is envisioning is uh, there are three ways they are depend upon, depending upon the kind of requirements you have. So if you are looking for a lightweight uh, collection and uh, lightweight collection and, and sharing of content, then uh, they are introducing a new functionality on uh, Dell. This uh, is called uh, Bolts. So uh, now, when you go onto your sh uh, on your Dell, yeah. so now when you go onto your Dell, uh, this is already released for preview. So uh, so it's already available on your uh, on your Office 365 subscription. So when you go to your, on your Dell, you will will get an option to add content uh, to your boards. So you can create multiple uh, multiple uh, uh, multiple boards in which you can pin these, you pin your documents or pin your content uh, as per as per the need. So it is it is less tightly governed as we say because end users will be able to create boards and add uh, knowledge content uh, into it. Uh, the second in the line is a microsite. Uh, if your organization is looking for a more organized and contextual information uh, or, or knowledge management system, uh, this uh, they are providing. Uh, uh, sorry, right. So they are providing a new functionality which is called uh, microsites. Uh, Microsoft is uh, is taking the goals to a next level uh, to a next level. Uh, where you will be able to pin your content on an article. So uh, you can users as end users and, and authors will be able to create uh, articles and pin your uh, pin your uh, content uh, from your Dell into these uh, in these articles, and it will be available uh, via microsites uh, for for end users to consume. Uh, and the third um, in in this in this list of uh, how we are going to uh, aggregate or how we are going to collect the content is going to be uh, uh, Infopedia. So this is still a, a concept which Microsoft is is thinking about. So uh, 
it is not going to be available for us uh, soon maybe in, uh, like maybe uh, maybe available towards the end or early next year uh, they are code the code name is infopedia so this is going to be a more sophisticated portal uh, where you will have all the uh, all the features and functionality which is available uh, for your uh, end users to consume uh, they can create new articles they can uh, they can create new categories they can that uh, you can control who can authors you can control the the viewing uh, uh, who is going to view your, your your the content so this is going to be a full fledged uh, 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 knowledge management portal uh, for from the collection perspective as well as from uh, from the delivery or all the consumption perspective as well. Uh, moving forward, uh, so as we know that OneDrive for Business has been in has been around for for a while now. So uh, Microsoft is making significant investment on uh, on off OneDrive uh, for for business. Again, uh, this is going to be a seamless. This will also be extended. It is all. In fact, this is already extended. To uh, uh, in in the current hybrid scenarios implementation, it is already expanded uh, to your SharePoint on-prem implementation. But going forward, that implement that integration is going to be much more seamless, uh, uh, much more seamless with respect to when when we talk about when it integrates with uh, the cloud search service application. And uh, if we look closely, uh, if we look closely on uh, OneDrive for Business. Uh, Microsoft is now removing uh, the limit of 20k files. So one of the, uh, though Microsoft had a per user limit of uh, one terabyte, but they have a very obnoxious uh, uh, limit, which was like you can only hold your one drive can only hold uh, 20,000 uh, 20, uh, uh, document at a time. So which which was kind of uh, uh, not going well with the end users because most of the users were not able to use the entire one terabyte of space uh, because of this limitation. Not now, Microsoft is removing that limit as well. Uh, they are also increasing uh, the file size limit to 10 GBs, uh, so you will be able to upload a file of 10, G, uh, 10, uh, 10 uh, GBs to your uh, of, to your OneDrive and, and share. Uh, they are also making uh, improvements in the disk uh, and on on the sync functionality, uh, the sync functionality on on across your uh, your uh, your uh, your uh, machines, uh, your uh, devices. So now the sync will be much better. So there will be no two cache uh, double caching of the files and and uh, sensitive sync. Uh, so you will be able to do a selective sync of of content from within your. Uh, of, of, uh, within your uh, OneDrive for business. Uh, for future releases, which one of the limitations which I personally have, have seen it many times uh, happening is uh, it does not support uh, 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 file names with uh, hash special characters, so which uh, they are going to do away and also they will be supporting longer, longer, uh, longer uh, uh, file paths as well. Uh, moving ahead, uh, I think this is a, this is an interesting section uh, where uh, where we will be uh, I'll be walking through uh, uh, the updates from SharePoint. So this uh, the focus will be very very limited. Uh, we'll be I'll be just touching upon a very uh, important which I feel is important uh, for uh, part uh, in, in, in important announcement for uh, SharePoint 2016. So this is not an exhaustive list, but this. I, my, as for my belief, this is uh, going to be important. Uh, these features are pretty important uh, and, and most important uh, announcement with respect to SharePoint 2016. Uh, if you look into the uh, roadmap uh, for uh, and, and the history of uh, SharePoint uh, uh, from from the beginning, uh, so the first phase of of, of SharePoint was when. Uh, 2003 and 2000, uh, 2001 and 2003, when uh, uh, the core focus was around uh, uh, collaboration. Uh, then came uh, 2006 and 2010 with uh, uh, MOS 2007 and SharePoint Server 2010. Uh, the focus was mostly around content management. Uh, 
in 2012, uh, Microsoft uh, starting uh, started to look towards uh, uh, the cloud and and enterprise social, and uh, and and with with this, with the next release of SharePoint 2000, which is to, uh, SharePoint 2016, Microsoft is taking it to the next level. So now your on-prem deployment will be inspired by cloud experiences, and it will be uh, your cloud on on-prem. Uh, on-prem SharePoint will have will be available for you to extend using uh, services on cloud. So start with some some bad news. Uh, so this is the list of deprecated uh, uh, deprecated uh, uh, functionalities. So uh, with 2016, no uh, SharePoint 2016 foundation will be uh, will be available. So the the customers or or the users currently having and currently having uh, our own uh, foundation they will uh, and they want to upgrade to 2016 they will have to think through a strategy how 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 they will how they will be moving uh, to uh, to uh, uh, server version rather than the foundation uh, uh, moving uh, ahead is uh, uh, no sharepoint 2016 designer so uh, this is this is with uh, the microsoft strategy that uh, uh, it will not allow it. It, it, it wants to uh, discourage users to use SharePoint Designer uh, because you because at this point, uh, my Designer is providing the avenues for uh, correcting the SharePoint platform, which uh, which will not which users are are kind of not using best practices to implement, and they are tweaking the SharePoint implementation uh, uh, as per uh, as per their their needs. And which is not as per uh, the best practices. Uh, so Microsoft is discouraging that now. But but having said that, uh, SharePoint Design 2013 will still work with uh, uh, SharePoint 2016. Uh, performance point uh, uh, service lives on. So uh, Microsoft is not going to make any new investment on it. It will just be supported for uh, towards the end of the cycle. Uh, same goes with InfoPart. So this this announcement was made uh, last year during SharePoint conference. Uh, 2014. It is still the same. Uh, Access-based uh, forms uh, may be available. So, as 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 a big announcement last year, uh, Microsoft looks like they have not made uh, good progress on 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 this uh, this piece as yet. So, not much ma not major announcement uh, we heard this year, and it may be available, but there is no uh, clear roadmap available at this point. Uh, so authentication mode. Uh, so apart from uh, now, they are Microsoft, as my, as Vinit said, Microsoft is opening up to the out, out, outer world. So now they will be. Yeah. So now um, they will be uh, the the OAuth and SAML authentication will be first class decision. They will be uh, unable to by default. But having said that, yeah, the having said that, the old authentication mode like claims on. Uh, Windows authentication using claim will also be uh, and forms of authentication will still be supported. Uh, one more major announcement what Microsoft has has made is uh, zero downtime patching. So Microsoft is uh, focusing on. I think this has been one of the one of the big pain areas for all the IT administrators. Uh, uh, patching uh, now they are trying to make trying to make it pretty simple and and smooth and seamless. Uh, they will. Uh, they are what they are doing is they are reducing the uh, uh, the footprint of uh, uh, the release. So they will be making uh, more frequent and more uh, and, and smaller releases, and uh, so they will be uh, so and and uh, in place and online installation. So the installation will be in place and online. So you will not none of your uh, services will be restarted or. Uh, or there will be no downtime uh, as far as uh, your services as well as your content on SharePoint. Uh, Office your project server will be integrated with uh, with the database, uh, but again, uh, this will uh, uh, this will be uh, controlled by licensing, and 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 I my belief is this is pointing towards a similar kind of experience what we what is available uh, pro, uh, available uh, currently available on. Office 365. This is pointing towards uh, integration uh, project ma management portal as 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 a, as a next gen portal uh, going forward. 
uh, they, they are also making a huge investment towards the telemetry. Now users, uh, now administrators can see uh, uh, the users, uh, users uh, usage pattern. So devices they are using, the browsers they are using, and, and uh, the uh, operating system they are using uh, for that. Uh, so this was, uh, this was, uh, these were, these are the key features available, uh, the key, key features from uh, from uh, SharePoint 2016, there is a whole 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 lot of uh, other list which we have, which we may have uh, uh, future webinars on. Uh, updates on Windows, uh, as we have seen, as we know that Microsoft has uh, is all set to release their uh, Windows 10 sometime sometime this summer. Uh, so Microsoft provided an important update for uh, for business how uh, the Windows update for business. So how they are envisioning uh, windows will be updated and uh, uh, will be upgraded how the enterprise will upgrade and up update uh, to windows 10 going forward so they are uh, they are now moving into uh, into a, a different uh, revenue model where 2000 uh, windows 10 is going to be the last major release of uh, their operating system going forward it is going to be uh, as, as a service where all the services and all the patches will be provided as a service going forward. And again, so the, the, this is focused around uh, providing seamless and 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 uh, seamless uh, uh, providing seamless uh, experience to the end user, and also uh, it reduces the burden on on from from IT administrators point of view. Uh, to, to achieve that, uh, they are, have introduced System Center Configuration Manager, uh, which will enable the IT or uh, IT administrators to uh, to uh, update the releases uh, to their end users. Uh, so with this, uh, I will pass it on to Vinny uh, for updates on Skype for Business as well as uh, uh, updates on Azure. Vinny, over to you. Thank you very much, Ravi. Uh, folks, as you would have uh, heard, a uh, bunch of updates, more around uh, SharePoint, Office 365, and uh, Ravi just touched upon Windows 10. Uh, as you can imagine, the whole objective of this session was uh, just to give you a perspective on what were the various sort of sparks we saw. This is just the tip of the iceberg. This is probably around 20 of those sessions compiled into just you know a few slides. Um, those sessions, many of them are going to be available if you are registered, uh, and I'm sure there are many other sessions that are, uh, that are available later too. A uh, couple of more topics in the last 10 minutes that we have left I want to cover. One is around Skype for Business. Uh, everybody has known about Skype for the longest time, and everybody has also heard about Link. It was surprising that not even once uh, did I hear the uh, you know the word link being used at all during any of the conferences? They didn't even talk about what I say is that link is not Skype for business. There was a default um, assumption that link is uh, gone and you only have Skype for business. Uh, however, it is still built upon the same code base. It is still built upon the same uh, feature functionality that uh, you know uh, was there on uh, link while bringing some of the best capabilities of Skype and then further extending that. Uh, one of the key things that are very important for some of the organizations is the PBX feature integration. And this is where Microsoft has been uh, slightly delayed compared to many other um, vendors. But with Skype and Link, or uh, Skype for Business being a very prevalent in IT organizations, uh, bringing that feature really extends the key capabilities of that being the primary communication tool and mechanism, be it audio, video, or, or just you know internal communications. Uh, furthermore, uh, you know the investment that Microsoft has done is to have it uh, all integrated across all the devices. So every kind of major mobile platform does have a Skype for Business client, so the participation can be very very easy. Uh, there is also uh, all integration um, which has been there for Link, uh, now there with Skype for Business. So instead of two, two, two different versions, now there is only one particular version of the IAM tool uh, called Skype for Business. Skype in itself, um, has this was a beta feature that was announced last year, and this conference was the sort of the full and 
full-fledged uh, uh, release of the translator. Um, you know, it's still called in the preview mode. The idea is you can now have communication uh, and on the fly, if you're speaking a different language than the person you're communicating with, the Skype translator will convert that audio into that person's uh, native language so that there is a communication still possible. Um, you know, think of various usages of these and we saw the demo of it. It is certainly one of the uh, first versions and it will continue to improve but certainly a lot of potential that we saw in this voice translation as a feature which has been an investment that Microsoft has made uh, in their R&D uh, over the last, I would say, more than 10 years and that has what has come out as one of the key um, usage which can be uh, applied to many, many scenarios. Okay, um, last topic which certainly should not be ignored and if you are in the IT industry you know that uh, cloud overall is also synonymous with you know two, three major vendors having everything around the infrastructure as a service, uh, platform as a service, uh, in the Microsoft platform, you hear a lot about Office 365, but you will continue to if you have not already heard a lot about Azure. And Azure is uh, something that has really captured a lot of people's imagination. Uh, what we heard, some of the updates during this conference, I just want to touch upon a couple of them, important ones. One very key one, which is in line with Microsoft's overall objective of having a hybrid uh, environment, because they still have a lot of IT organizations which have their data centers. However, there are lots and lots of capabilities and features that have been built into Azure as a key uh, platform that are not available uh, you know, on their own uh, on, the on the data center deployment, which would be your, even if you have the latest and the greatest version of the Windows Server. Uh, what Microsoft is bringing is called the Azure Stack. This is the uh, environment that you can actually deploy in your data center and this becomes your basis for your private or even if you are still going to be using some parts of your uh, public cloud, uh, you can have a hybrid cloud infrastructure created. Same APIs, same tools, same management environment, same kind of features functionalities for uh, everything from the infrastructure to platform as a service uh, and all the DevOps tools that you're used to on the public version of Azure are also possible now to be deployed and managed in your uh, private cloud, um, in your data center as a private cloud, or maybe as I said, you could also have it along with your public cloud. Uh, this is going to give uh, you know some very interesting scenarios that you can start thinking about. In the interest of time, I'm going to uh, touch upon a few topics quickly. One very, very interesting topic, and you know, this one slide cannot do justice to this particular feature. Uh, you have to find a session, and we'll be happy to point you to a couple of them uh, on the on uh, on this whole Azure RMS document tracking. What what this uh, idea is that. If you protect any content within your organization, be it on SharePoint, be it in Outlook, um, the ability for that document to be sent across has always been there and making sure that the person is not really um, uh, you know, sharing somewhere because you cannot print it, you can protect it, that feature and functionality has been there. It has been expanded and um, you know, improved and enhanced to, of course, one, extend it to mobile devices so that even on mobile devices of those documents are accessed, they, if somebody has the right, they can view it and access it securely. Also extending it to an environment where you can actually track if this document was forwarded to some other uh, person and how it is traveling through the entire channel. So this person received it, this person forwarded it, uh, you know, that because the document has its own identity, there is an entire history and a log of that document tracking that gives a lot of, again, scenarios for compliance, for auditing, and for various uh, needs that organizations have. I'm going to just uh, you know, wrap up with one more slide around uh, Office that is already uh, coming in for iPhone and iPad in summer. Uh, these will be Office apps. Right, which will be Azure will be providing. 
Um, there is a lot of Mac support that is coming in if uh, you are still a Mac user. Uh, Android apps are also coming. Um, you know that will also be interesting. Um, Outlook app, I think you have already been using. If you have not been, please try it out. It's it, it, it certainly a very, um, very important, very productive application. I think in the interest of time, we'll cover one last slide. And just as I said, many of the topics that we have covered are all around some of the key things, but there are some other notable ones uh, that is uh, something worth mentioning as we wrap up this session. Uh, Windows Server was also announced and Windows Server 2016. Uh, so was the system CentOS 2016. And as you will see, uh, all the products from Microsoft are going to be right now branded as the 2016 version. And this next year coming, this year and the coming next year is going to be very interesting in the product line coming from Microsoft as almost all the products are getting a refresh. Uh, from the from the SharePoint environment to Office, even Office 2016, we were so slightly surprised to hear SQL 20 Server 2016. And if you have already been tracking, uh, I mean that's certainly a very very uh, important announcement in the SQL Server uh, environment. Um, and some of the other features that we will not have time to cover right now, but the uh, ATA is something worth looking at. Uh, this is again uh, something that allows you to secure uh, your environment and make sure that you know you are able to predict uh, what could be going wrong in your environment. Note with that, uh, we will uh, pause and uh, take any questions that are there. I want to thank you everyone who attended the session for their time. Hopefully, this was uh, useful for what you're looking at. Um, again, summarizing, this was the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more that was covered. There are over 300 sessions uh, that were covered uh, during the four or five days. Uh, it was a pretty busy uh, packed schedule. Uh, many of those uh, sessions are available, but we thought we'll summarize it for you and highlight some of the key points that may uh, make you uh, look at a particular topic that you may be uh, further interested in. We can elaborate on those. Uh, please do send us your question or ask any question that you may have right now. Note, thank back you, over to you. you. Uh, please see if there are any questions. Uh, thanks, Vinit and Ravi, for the insight uh, full session. Uh, yes, like we have a few questions uh, coming in. We have got a couple of uh, minutes. So the first question coming from the mark is, what will be the migration approach from SharePoint 2013 to SharePoint 2016? I'll have Ravi take that uh, question. Ravi, if you want to. Yeah, sure. Uh, so the strategy is uh, uh, is going to be similar from uh, the what we had uh, for from 2010 to 2013. Uh, you will be able. There will be two paths. Whether either you upgrade or you do the migration of your content. Uh, so upgrade will be uh, available uh, from 2013 to. Uh, uh, 2013 to 2016 using uh, database attached method, uh, but uh, there is no direct uh, upgrade from 2007 or 2010 to 2016. Uh, it has to be a, a, a double hop. Uh, uh, coming on to the other side of the spectrum is the migration. So there will be tools available uh, like uh, for for your uh, content migration. So from your uh, previous uh, and uh, previous versions, you can migrate your content to uh, 2016. Thanks, Ravi. So the other question uh, is, when is SharePoint 2016 coming to the market? So do you have any idea on the dates of release? Uh, yes. Uh, so this announcement was made uh, during uh, one of the key sessions uh, on on in, in Ignite. Uh, so uh, the the First beta version of uh, 2016 is will be available uh, towards the end of uh, towards the last quarter of this year. Uh, towards the uh, in the first quarter, the first released candidate release candidate will be available, and and towards the, the towards the second quarter of next year, we will have uh, RTM version available in, in the market. Thanks, Ravi. And as so, per the updates which we are getting from Microsoft, so they are on track uh, for, for these releases. 
Great. So I have other question on SharePoint again. Uh, so I am running SharePoint 2010 today. Is it advisable to move to Office 365 or wait for SharePoint 2016? Uh, it, it, it depends on, on your specific requirements. Uh, uh, advisable will because migrate you migrate it depends upon uh, how multiple multiple factors uh, one of them is the the level of customizations you have in your uh, 2010 environment uh, if you do not have uh, much core customization and your overall uh, uh, 2010 uh, environment is is mostly out of the box so suggestion would be to migrate to you can you can migrate to Office 365 now, and and uh, and then in later when 2016 is available, you can uh, you can have you can choose to have uh, the on-prem version of 2016 and leverage uh, the services available on Office 365. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I have the last question for the day. So, which version of SQL Server will be supported for 2016? Uh, yes, so it's an interesting question. So, uh, one 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 key update which I have not covered in this slide is uh, with respect to the scalability of uh, SharePoint uh, 2016. So, it is it has improved tremendously now. Uh, so, to uh, to extend just to uh, just to give you the gauge of it is. Now the each content database will be support will be extendable till uh, till terabytes. So currently it is 200 gigs. To support all this uh, all this scalability, uh, so what Microsoft is is focusing on, uh, uh, they will be uh, supporting uh, SQL 2014 SP1 and beyond. Okay, thanks uh, thanks Ravi and Vineet uh, for taking up uh, this session. It was really wonderful. Uh, I would like to thank all the audiences here who has joined uh, for this session and have a good day. Thank you, Vinit. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining uh, today's session.